Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. If you're like me, you grew up with stories of the Bible and knew that Ahab was an evil king of Israel. You know, if you didn't grow up with stories of the Bible, let me assure you, Ahab was a wicked king of Israel. All the kings of the northern kingdom of Israel were wicked, and he was one of the worst. That's why two stories about him surprised me. The first one is in 1 Kings 20. Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, started making demands on Ahab. With a stronger army, Ben-Hadad and the 32 allied kings with him had the upper hand. So Ahab gave in. But then Ben-Hadad pushed a little too far. So Ahab and the elders of Israel refused and geared up for war. Then Hadad sent word to him, The gods do so to me and more also, if enough dust is left of Samaria for a handful of each of these people who follow me. In other words, we're going to pulverize you. Seeing an overwhelming multitude coming at him and hearing those words, Ahab had to be afraid. That's when suddenly a prophet of God showed up. It might have been Elijah, but it's most likely while he was down in Mount Horeb meeting with God. The unnamed prophet gave King Ahab hope. Any time before, when Ahab heard, Thus says the Lord, he'd heard bad news, judgment. So I'm sure he must have winced when he heard those words. But instead of hearing, I'm sending Ben-Hadad to judge you and take your people captive like you deserve, because you've been worshipping Baal instead of me, Ahab heard hope. Thus says the Lord, Have you seen all the multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. A couple of chapters before, God had defeated Baal's prophets, so the people would know that he is the Lord. But Ahab still didn't seem to get it. So this war with Ben-Hadad would be God's personal way to reach out to Ahab and say, See who I am? See what I can do? Ahab found himself in a position where he would grasp at any hope that was offered, and he seemed quite willing to obey whatever God wanted to ensure a victory. So he asked a couple of clarifying questions and obeyed the Lord's instruction. In this way, Ahab's army soundly defeated Ben-Hadad twice. At one point, the Bible says, the children of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of goats, while the Syrians filled the countryside. But in the end, the Syrians were literally begging for mercy. We'd love the story to end with Ahab following the Lord and changing his ways by leading Israel to honor and worship the Lord. But that's not what happened. Ahab knew that God was the Lord, but he definitely didn't act like it. He didn't consult the Lord at the end of the battle. And the next chapter, we find him allowing his wicked wife Jezebel to take over instead of God. So many people would emphatically tell you, yes, I believe in God. They've seen enough to know there is a God who controls the universe. But as James 2.19 says, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Ahab saw what God had done, but knowing who God was did not change him. He was the same self-absorbed person that he was before. He didn't hand over the reins to God. He listened to Jezebel when she said, You're the one in authority over Israel. Just leave everything to me. I'll get you what you want. That sounded so much better than God being in control. That happens not just with Ahab or people who believe in God but haven't committed to him. It can happen with Christians, too. And it's something we really need to watch out for. Don't we sometimes think we know what's best? and make decisions without consulting the Lord? Or we walk in a situation and think, I can handle this, and don't stop to pray and ask for God's guidance and strength. Or we hand a problem over to God and ask Him to help us, and then get off our knees, pick up the problem, heft it on our shoulders, and walk off with it. If we know He is the Lord, we should act like it. 
we should be modeling to the world what a life of faith and surrender to Christ's lordship truly looks like. Then those Ahabs of the world will know that he is Lord when they see him working in and through our lives. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.